Why is any day not good enough? Why not tomorrow or next week? Why should I obey the gospel today? Your response should be, why would you not want to obey the gospel today? It is true that there are those that do not know the word of God. And if you run across someone that does not know the Word of God, you need to study with them. You need to be willing to study with them and accept whatever time they have available that you could study with them. <coughs> Excuse me. Once an alien sinner <clears throat> knows the darkness of his sin, he'll recognize that lost condition that he's in, and he should want to answer the call of the gospel whatever day it may be, especially if it's today. You know, an alien sinner gains nothing whatsoever in waiting, but he may lose some because he may forget that he belongs to Satan and not to Christ at that time. Jesus said, Behold, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. For he says, an acceptable time, I have heard you, in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2. God never says, behold, without something worthy of beholding, listening to, or obeying, following that word. Anytime the Lord says, Behold, we need to look and know and see what He is talking about. So tell me, what do these following statements have in common? Acts 2, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and Peter said, Peter said, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Looking at Acts 16, verse 29. Then they called for light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. What about Acts 9, verse 6? So he trembled. So he, trembling and, and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Here's three verses concerning conversions in Acts. But what do they have in common? What could it possibly be? How about urgency? Urgency. Salvation is always an urgency. It is the urgency of the situation in which each one of these men found themselves. They were lost. They needed salvation. The thought of being lost eternally pricked their hearts and induced the question of the urgency for an answer. They needed that answer then. Nothing will get the attention of a lost sinner any quicker than knowing that he will be eternally lost. He will no longer have that opportunity the day that he dies. So, that brings us back to the original question. Why should I obey the gospel today? You know, people don't quite realize what delaying does to them when they just stand around and wait. They don't realize, it seems, that the more you delay, the easier it is to delay and the harder it is to make a commitment. Many, many people miss church one day a week, one day a month, then two days a month, then three days a month. And pretty soon they don't come back. They're just not available anymore because they have been
taken over by Satan in the world. They find worldly things more important than following what Christ would have you do. You know, it's sometimes like a treatable illness. If it goes untreated, it can be fatal. Failure to worship God, failure to obey His commands are like a fatal disease. Those who hear the Word of God and need it should obey it when they hear it and know what it is. You know, time is very unstable. Particularly regarding our lives, we seldom think of the instability of time. But it is truly unstable. We know that uh, some things about time, but we seldom think about the instability of time in our own lives. Job tells us in Job 14 verse 1, man is born of woman and is of few days and full of trouble. I just wondered to myself how many days are few days? So being 75, I multiplied it by 365 and came up with 27,000 days. That sounds like a lot of days, but really in the space of time, it is a very brief period. You consider your age and how long you've lived and the number of days you've lived compared with those since the days of creation. It is but just a moment in the timeline of life. Psalms 90 verse 12 tells us, so, sir, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You know, if we will search the scriptures, we will gain wisdom. And we know that our days are limited, therefore we must do more every day in order to gain that wisdom that we may need from time to time. Hebrews 9 verse 27 tells us, as it is appointed for men to die once, so after the judgment, so this after this the judgment, we each one know that our time will end. We're not going to live here forever. We have short numbered days. Peter uh, reminds us again in 1 Peter 1 verse 24, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall away. That's the way our life is. Time is very unstable, unstable for us. It's very, very difficult for us to grasp the fact that we're not going to be here forever. In 2 Peter 3, verses 9 and 10, it tells us when we pass on, then there's going to be the judgment we're going to have to face that. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Those people who are looking for Christ to come back and reign in another thousand years won't have a place to stand because the Lord says this earth will melt with fervent heat and it will pass away. Looking at 1 Samuel 20 verse 3, David tells us, Then David took an oath and said, Your father certainly knows that I have found favor in your eyes. And he said, do not let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. That's how quickly death can happen to any of us. Just one step, one misstep. And without Christ, we're lost eternally. Proverbs 27 verse 1 tells us that tomorrow is not guaranteed. Do not boast about tomorrow, for what do you know of what a day may bring forth? And then in Ecclesiastes 9 verses 11 and 12, it tells us 
I returned and saw unto the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. For man does not know his time. Like the fish taken in a cruel net, like a bird caught in a snare, so the sons of men are snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. Time is unstable. It will affect each and every one of us in different ways depending on what happens. But the impact of sin is eternally deadly. It is a great impact. It impacts our lives and it impacts all the others that we come in contact to with as sinners. So sin will definitely enslave us. Solomon listed sins of the youth in, in Ecclesiastes 11 verses 9 through 12 verse 1. He said, Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for God all of these things will, bring, will be brought into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from your heart, put away evil from your flesh, for your childhood and youth are vanity. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. You know, when we get older, life is not as exciting as it was when we were younger, and everything was new, and so we don't have as much pleasure in it as we did back then in those days. In Romans 16, Romans 6 verses 16 through 18 you belong to whomever you serve if you wish to serve Satan you belong to him if you wish to serve Christ then you will belong to him if you will do his will and keep his commandments do you not know that whom you present yourself yourselves slaves to obey you are that one slave when whom you obey whether of sin leading to death or unto obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Romans 6 verses 16 through 18. Who would you rather serve? If you obey the gospel today, you would be serving Christ. If you don't, you would still be serving sin. Sin deceives you. It surely does. Paul gave us a warning in his letter to Timothy. <clears throat> he said in 2 Timothy 3 verse 13, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Even those who are deceivers will be deceived by other liars. We need to prepare ourselves because the evil times are here. And you can have your heart hardened against God. And that's what happens to those who don't come to worship. And they just ignore it and ignore it and pretty soon their hearts are hardened towards God and they don't want to come in and worship the Lord as they should. But exhort one another daily, while it is still called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin does have an impact on our lives. Even as Christians, we can see sin around us. And sometimes we may fall into those temptations if we're not careful. In Hebrews, 13, uh, Hebrews 3 verse 13, it says, Exhort one another daily. While it is still called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. In Acts 24 verse 25, it says that sin de deceived Felix. 
Remember Felix when he was uh, judging Paul and Paul preached to him? He wanted to delay it for a convenient season, which many people do today. They want to harden their heart against it and delay it. Now, as he reasoned about righteousness and self-control and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. You know, if you look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 17, you'll see the Laodicean deception. They were deceived by sin. This gives us that result. Because you say, I am rich, I have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know, you do not know that you are wicked and miserable and poor and blind and naked. The Lord was getting ready to remove their candlestick because they trusted in riches and their hearts were hardened against the things that the Lord would have them do and believe. When you are not in, the, in Christ, you are isolated from all the spiritual blessings that are available to you. As Paul told the Ephesians in uh, chapter 1, verse 3, all spiritual blessings are in Christ, those who are in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. The last two words are in Christ. That's where those blessings are found. People will tell you that their prayers are are not answered from time to time. Tell them to refer to Proverbs 28, verse 9. One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. The Lord doesn't want to hear you if you don't want to hear his word. You become an abomination to him. That's why your prayers are sometimes not answered. Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah was keenly aware of the reason that prayers were not heard and blessings were not received. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. His ear is heavy, that it is, nor is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you your heart's not right with God, how can you expect your prayers to be answered? How can you expect to have the spiritual blessings that are taught to us in the Bible and not obey the Word of God? You know, everything you do as a sinner, you're a bad influence upon those loved ones that you hold dear to yourself. You're the bad influence if you're not in Christ. Wouldn't it be better to obey the gospel and be a good influence for your family and everyone else around you rather than obeying Satan and doing his will? The Lord will not forgive the sins of any person who will not repent. And your bad influence will be felt by your children and your children's children for years to come. Look at Exodus 34 verse 7 keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquities and transgressions and sins, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children, the third and fourth generations. Why so many generations? Because if you don't teach your children, how are they going to teach their children? And how are their children going to teach their children? Because none of you knew the Word of God. You failed your children when you didn't teach them. If you don't know Christ, you cannot teach your children. You are their prime example. You are their first role model. You're the one that they look up to. It is up to you to teach them. Just like we said in this morning's sermon. You know, the world can be an exciting place. But you need to remember Paul's advice in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33. 
Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. You are a bad example if you are not a good example. If you are not in Christ, then you're a bad example to everyone who is around you, particularly your loved ones. You know, the Apostle Peter wants us to do our due diligence and research our salvation. 2 Peter 1 verse 10. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. 1 Peter 1 verse 10. It's your responsibility to search, to listen, to hear, to obey the word of God and to be an example to everyone else. You need to make your calling and election sure. You're the one that's responsible to do that. No one else can do it for you. The question is, will you obey? The biblical way to salvation is the only way. There's only one way, no matter what man says or who teaches you anything else. You must hear the word. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You must believe that word. Therefore I say to you that you will die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. John 8, 24. You must repent of your sins. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17, verse 30. And it tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10 that you must confess Jesus. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Then you must be baptized for the remission of your sins. Not because your sins were already forgiven as so many people teach. It tells us in Acts 22:16. Now why are you waiting? Arise, be baptized, and wash away your sins. That's when your sins are forgiven. When you come in contact with the blood of Christ through your obedience to his word, calling on the name of the Lord. There is no other way. Only the Bible way. Eternity lies in the balance for each and every one of us. So we need to pay attention to the word of God. The invitation is yours while we stand and sing.